All right, here's the problem. You want these awesome multi-piece LED headlights, but you don't know how much they cost. You don't know what questions you should be asking, and you don't know where to start. Well, stick around because today's episode is all about the Jewel Eye LED headlights from the buyer's perspective. All right, if you haven't watched the last episode about Jewel Eye headlights, I'm gonna put that in a playlist so you can watch it after this one. But this week, I asked you questions. I sent out an email to a whole bunch of you guys. I also asked in the community tab here on YouTube. And these are questions that you guys have sent me that we're answering today in this episode. And I also reached out to a couple of content creators that paid people to make them Jewel Eye headlights in their cars. So I got a guy with the Civic. I also got another guy with the Civic. I guess they're both Civics. <laughs> I just realized that. Uh, but they have some feedback for us as buyers, as people that don't know how to build this stuff, but they wanted to have the Jewel Eye headlights. Also, later on in the video, I have some output shots driving at night, stuff that was supplied to me by one of these creators in his Civic, and I think you're gonna wanna see that. If you want your questions answered, definitely make sure if you're not a member, you can join here. I've also got my email list on the website. Let's dive into some of the first questions that we have. Oh, check this out. John got the idea to put one of the new hex lights. These are what's gonna be hanging from the roof. This whole top is gonna be all done up in these hex lights soon, but he wanted to just see if we could get better lighting. Anyway, that's why it looks different. Let's start with my man, Peter, Henrik's boot. He sent a message basically saying like, what happens if you install these things and a part fails? Like, can you replace anything? Can you, are there bulbs in these Jewel Eye headlights? And that's, the first answer is easy, no. It's an LED, it's built in. You can't change it. You can't increase the output. Several of you asked that. Can you make them brighter? Not really. You've got a driver that's made to push a certain type of LED, and that's it. That's all you get. You can't change the color. You can't change the output. Sure, you could, but nobody's going to do that. They're bright. They're good already. You don't actually need to change anything on them. And yes, they are brighter than a regular LED light bulb in a projector. David Monkel says, would it be easier to just buy the new NHK LED mini projectors? It's obviously some new aftermarket projector on the market. Here's my thought on buying a bunch of individual little squares. I've seen a couple of these things from friends of mine that are builders. I don't want to mess with all that. That's so many individual little parts that you have to individually aim. I'm sure you could. The problem is now you're spending your money to make something for somebody else when what they want is that. They want that really cool look directly from Acura. By the way, on that subject, you have all kinds of different options. You have a quad row of low beam and a quad row of high beam, I think. There's different types of Acura projectors that are Jewel Eye. So you've got the ILX, the RDX, the TLX, something other X. There's so many different acronyms ending in X from Acura that have Jewel Eye headlights and they are damn expensive. So let me get to one of your other questions about how expensive these things are. Okay, next up we have a question from Custom LED Creations in Trinidad and Tobago. He says, on a scale of one to 10, how hard is this retrofit? Let me just take away any doubt, it's a 10. It's the hardest. You're not gonna find a harder retrofit because there's all these different mounting points. There's all this stuff that you can do incorrectly. To perfectly have three points of adjustment, like a ball joint, and then a top up and down you know, adjustment, and then a left and right rotation, all of those three points have to be exactly at the right pitch so that it doesn't push out light onto the road diagonally because that would suck. You do all the things perfect, but then you mount it on the car and you don't realize that the headlight has to be rotated because of the way that these lights are built. Well, now they're crooked and that makes it an extremely difficult thing to do. You probably need to have the actual car if you wanna do this thing perfect or you have to do the same type of light over and over again. And trust me, that's gonna come back up later when we hear from our dude Lissandro on his little interview. My guy also asks what was the hardest part of the retrofit. I think I kind of just covered that. Just all of it, it's ridiculous, it's big, it doesn't mount easy. He asks also if something fails in this retrofit, projector stops working, can you replace parts? Nope, again, you cannot. Uh, and how expensive are donor headlights to be used for this retrofit? A lot of people ask that question. I hear that most of these used Acura headlights that have jewel eyes in them are about 600 bucks a pop, which means you gotta buy a housing. You're probably not gonna be able to find just the projector in good condition by itself. You need to start with a donor housing. Doesn't matter if the lenses are scratched or if there's broken tabs. You just need to find a good housing that hasn't been opened and doesn't have a bunch of cracks and stuff where water got in there. It's gotta be clean inside. It's probably gonna cost you about 600 bucks because they're even in high demand. All right, so let's hop into the questions that I asked the two content creators. We have two guys, one of them, Nocturnal Habits, and the other, his name is Lissandro. He's got a channel called Mod Garage. So both of these guys, I'm gonna put their information below, but I asked them, what's your favorite part 
of this headlight build. Let's hear from Lissandro first, actually. Specifically, what I like is the unique look. So I can literally, with the phone, choose any mode that I want. It looks super aggressive. The red looks fire. You can do whatever you want with them. So that's my favorite part of that. Like I said, they were rare at the time, super unique, and they're still my favorite part of the car. Like, no matter what, Fitman's on point, but um, they're my favorite part. They're, I literally, every time I take the car out or I go anywhere, I get questions about the headlights. They just look aggressive. It's on a Civic. When it pulls up, when you're driving, you know, they work like normal TLX headlights. It just looks super aggressive. So that's my favorite part. All right, well, Nocturnal Habits said that he liked that it was different and unique. I think that that just goes hand in hand with what Lissandro said. Nobody really has stuff like this. And it is, in general, most people's favorite part of the car. What a dope siren. Okay, I asked both of these guys, what is something that you didn't know that you wish you would have known before you got into this project? Let's hear from Lissandro first. Um, what I didn't know, when I first did uh, the dual stuff, I had a different car and I was gonna try to retrofit it myself. And I did not realize how hard it was to actually, you know, do that whole setup. I bought the parts, I bought the jewels myself, didn't know how hard that was. So that's why I ended up paying somebody to get them done. All right, and then for my guy, Nocturnal Habits, he just said that he didn't know it was gonna be so much back and forth with the builder. He had some problems, he had to ship the lights back. He just, I, I don't think he realized how much was involved in it, what could go wrong. And so he's had a little bit of a struggle with that, as well as the fact that he just crashed his car. So. It's probably harder for him to actually have these things and enjoy them right now. And that sucks, but we're wishing him good luck to get that thing back on the road. Okay, let's go back to Lissandro. We're gonna answer the question, how much? Specifically in this car, because this is the second set that I did. When I did it, I paid from 1200 to 1400 or something like that, just for the labor and the housing for the Civic. I supplied the internals, the TLX jewels themselves with the ballast and all that stuff. So we heard from Lissandro how much he has invested so far into all this stuff. What he didn't know was kind of all involved with it and why he had a builder do it for him. Nocturnal Habits, he ended up paying, I think about $1,400 as well. And I think, if I'm not wrong, I think that actually included the parts. So that builder did not make any money and now he's fixing stuff they didn't do right. That sounds like a bad situation for the builder. That's why we're gonna do a whole video all about this subject from the builder's perspective next week. So we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. Let's go back to more information from Lissandro, including what it looks like driving around at nighttime. My complaints mainly, at least in this setup, I was told that it could be fixed. I just haven't sent them out. Um, is the output, cause they're pointed kind of down. So it's not like, like you still get like a nice even projector look because it's nice even light it's not scattered everywhere you don't see no hot spots but it's pointed at the uh, kind of at the floor it's not like level like a normal headlight so i just got to get that readjusted in the internals because it's already maxed out it does have the adjustment um from factory but it's not uh it doesn't reach to the height that it uh, needs so we hear from one guy with the civic that paid to have his jewel eyes built He's driving around and he needs to send them back because they're adjusted to low. They're aiming down and they're maxed out. They're at their maximum high point of adjustment. So they need to go back and be internally adjusted so that they have a little bit more travel up, right? One thing I'd suggest like 100% is know your builder and make sure that they have done headlights in your chassis because they could have done a whole bunch of jewels or any other retrofits in different uh, chassis and it looked good, but like I said, I did two sets. Um, the first one that I did was literally a waste of money. It was $1,800 down the drain because the person that did them had experience doing jewels, but in a different chassis told me, you know, they can do it, et cetera, et cetera. Didn't work, $1,800 down the drain, so know your builder, have them show you pictures of their work on your chassis. Don't just go by the, oh yes, I can do it because I've done multiple different cars. Then with Nocturnal Habits, his is the opposite side. One of his is stuck aiming too high up, which just goes to show. If you don't know the platform, if you don't know that chassis, just like Lissandro said, you're probably gonna do this thing wrong. You might just adjust something that looked good on the bench, but you put it on the car, it's aimed too far down, or it's aimed too far up, or one's aimed too far up, and now you got cock, like, guys, this is, this is expensive, and it's hard, it's super hard. 10 out of 10, promise. It is very expensive, especially now, compared to before they are a lot more expensive. Like I said, when I got mine done, they were charging like $1,900, $1,800 for the retro with labor and um, parts and all that stuff. That's my headlights. The last thing that I asked these guys was any complaints. And again, back with Nocturnal Habits, it was more complaints with the builder who 
in his defense, and I just gotta say, if you're ever concerned, or if you're ever curious about like who I make this content for, number one, I make this comment for builders because I have their back. I want them to make more money. I want them to charge what they're worth and I want them to do better work. I want them to learn more and be able to sell that and support families or just, I don't know, just make a better side hustle income doing this stuff, not even doing it full time, just make more money for their experience and not have to like rely on this because it's a crazy business to be full time. I promise, I've been doing it forever. I've seen so many people come and go. This is the kind of thing that's like a builder killer. A jewel I build, that's a builder killer. That could just make you wanna throw it all away and just hang your hat up and be done with it. So I'm making you a checklist, something that you can sign up for. I'm gonna put a link below, you can sign up for that. I'm gonna send you the checklist, things that you need to ask the builder. And next week, we're gonna hear from builders specifically about what it takes and about things that they wish you would do differently as a buyer. And last but not least, after you sign up for that checklist, I'm gonna mail you the other questions that you've been asking both as members and people on my email list. I'm gonna answer all of those in a special email that goes out just to the people on that list. I hope to see you inside.